about to hear a romantic drama, Nola Says, I Do, adapted from a story in Street and Smith's Love Story magazine and featuring the love story girl in the role of Nola Dixon. This is the love story of Nola Dixon, who helped her Uncle John run a small but exclusive flower shop on the ground floor of the fashionable Hotel Westmore. It's now half past ten, and Nola is showing signs of growing restlessness. That's the third time you've watered that ivy, Nola. Oh, did I, Uncle? I, I mean, have I? You both didn't have. What's the matter? You're as nervous as a hen on a griddle. Oh, you you don't suppose anything's happened to him? Who? Why, why, Mr. Banning. He hasn't been in for his usual morning carnation. Look here, Nola. You aren't going to go and fall for that young man. Oh, of course not. What a silly idea. He is nice looking, though, and he's got a lovely suite up on the 20th floor. I, I saw it the time I took up those potted azaleas for his south window. <laughs> oh, so that's why you wanted to deliver them yourself. <laughs> oh, no, you're not interested in him, not one little bit. <laughs> Well, take my advice, Nola, and put Frank Banning out of your head. He's got plenty of money, all right, but he doesn't do anything about it. I've no use for a man who doesn't work. All Frank Banning wants to do is ride around in that airplane of his and do crazy stunts. Someday he'll crack up, mark my words. And you're too young and pretty to be left a widow, even with a lot of money. Well, don't get yourself all excited about it, Uncle John. Frank Banning has never even looked at me twice. He probably doesn't know I exist. Well, if he doesn't, he's a mighty blind young man. I guess I'd better take these roses and delphiniums up to Mrs. Peters. Oh, shh. Uncle John, here he comes now. Oh, my goodness. He's got a black eye. Uh, morning, Mr. Benny. Morning, Mr. Dixon. Oh, excuse me, please. Uh, my niece will take care of you. What? Well, yes, she might at that. Uh, what's that? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, don't let me keep you from delivering those flowers. Oh, oh no, no, indeed. I uh, wouldn't want him to wilt on me. Sorry to be so late this morning. Oh, are you? I hadn't noticed. A red carnation, as usual? No, no, I think I'll take a white one this morning. More appropriate. To go with the black eye, you mean? <laughs> you must have made quite a night of it. No, nothing of the sort. In bed by ten, if you must know. Now, this optic of mine was caused by a crack-up I had yesterday in my plane. Oh, you weren't badly hurt? Just the eye. Oh. Well, I guess you'll have to fix this hunk of vegetation in my lapel. Oh. I... Don't seem to see so well this morning. All right, now. Wait a minute. You've got to hold still. Okay. Say, you've got real blonde hair, haven't you? I have. What color are your eyes? Well, what difference does it make? None, not the slightest. What's your name? Dixon, like my uncle. Yes, I know that. I mean your front name. Oh, Nola. Nola. Rather unusual, isn't it? Oh, I suppose so. Look here, Nola. How would you like to take a trip abroad? What? You could have a car of your own, money, clothes. I bet you'd look swell done up in a lot of expensive clothes. No more work, nothing to do but have a good time. How'd you like it? How'd you like me to black your other eye? Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hold on there, Jack Dempsey. It's not that kind of a well, proposal. It's a proposal of marriage. Yes, I want you to marry me. You, you what? Don't you understand, Nola? I'm asking you to be my wife. But you, you, you hardly know me. Now, you're not going to stand there and tell me that you're in love with no, me. No, certainly not. Love has nothing to do with it. This is a business proposition. You see, I've got to get married. Got to get married? Well, why? Well, after that crack-up yesterday, the executor of my late father's estate got pretty sore. Yes? He's an antediluvian old wreck that thinks I should give up flying. It's too modern. If he had his way, I'd be riding around on one of those old-fashioned big-wheeled bicycles. And what's all this got to do with matrimony? Well, you see, according to my father's will... He's got control of my money until I get married. Yes. 
I guess my dad figured that matrimony would apply the brakes even more than George Salter. That's the executor's name. Mm-hmm. But if you say so, Nola, we can fool them. We can fool all of them. And what if I say I won't marry you? Well, then I'll just have to go and find someone else. That shouldn't be too difficult. No, I suppose not. But you look like a nice, level-headed, honest sort of person. And I've got to marry someone or George Salter will cut off my allowance. So then I'd have to give up flying. And you're willing to risk matrimony with me rather than have to forego that? Uh Uh-huh. That's about the size of it. Well, what do you say? Is it a go? Yes. That's the ticket. Only I want one thing understood. Well, what's that? I'm not marrying you for money, clothes, leisure, or a trip abroad. Well, but... I'm marrying you because I love you. Because you... I've loved you for months. Goodness knows why, but there you are. I'm marrying you on the chance that maybe after you've known me a little while, you'll get to love me a little, too. Otherwise, it's all off. I know. Very well. I don't make any rash promises, but I can always try. Then that's settled. All right, Frank. You may kiss the bride. Yes, but no longer. I believe it's customary. Very well. I guess I can stand it if you can. I'll be brave. Well, gosh, that packed more voltage than I expected. Didn't it? Well, I I suppose if you want to get married sometime next month, you'd better start taking me out so we can get acquainted. Next month be blowed. I can't wait that long, Nola. I mean, to get my plane back. We'll go out for dinner and a bit of dancing tonight, and tomorrow we get married. in thunder has got into you. But he said he'd be here to get me this morning at 10 o'clock sharp. Who said that? Frank Banning, of course. Uh, what's going on at 10 o'clock between you and Frank Banning? That's so all fired and important. We're getting married. You're what? Getting married. Oh, oh, it's just a platonic arrangement. At least that's what he thinks. Well, I'll be hornswoggled. You young people, I declare you don't think any more of getting yourself married nowadays than you do of eating an ice cream soda. Less. Oh, dear, why doesn't he... Oh, there he is now. Yes? Hello? Hello, Frank. Yes, yes, it's Nola. Where are you? Well, I'm all ready. I thought you said you'd be here by 10. You, you what? Oh, you borrowed the money to get your airplane fixed. Oh. What? But you can't go up in there today. They've not had enough time to make the proper repairs. But, Frank, please. Well, what about the wedding? We can be married tomorrow, but, but Frank, it's unlucky to postpone a wedding. Please, Frank, I, I have a horrible feeling that something will happen if you go up today. Frank, I... Please. Oh. oh, he hung up. Where's my hat? Now, where do you think you're going? Out to the airport. Frank Banning isn't going up in that airplane today. Not if I can help it. Yes. Pardon me, but could you, could you tell me which is Mr. Banning's plane? Oh, this is it, lady. Uh, this one right here. Oh, I see. Mr. Banning hasn't showed up yet? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I, I'm Mr. Banning's fiancé. It, oh. uh, he told me to come and meet him here. Oh, I, I, see. I suppose it's all right if I climb into the plane. <laughs> well, it's all right by me, lady. I'm only the mechanic. Oh, oh thank you. I, I guess you'll have to help me in. <laughs> oh, sure. Why not? Up to date. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah, there you are. Oh, oh, dear, where do you suppose he is? Mr. Banning, I mean. I, I don't know, lady. I'm waiting for the guy myself. <laughs> Want to show him how I fixed that altimeter. What's that? Oh, that contraption there. Oh, is it a very important part of the, the flying equipment? Sure, I'll say it is. Well, it must be about your lunchtime. Yes, and I'm hungry, too. Well, you go right ahead. I'll take good care of the plane until Mr. Banning comes. I guess he will at that. Uh, tell Mr. Banning where he can find me if he wants me. Sure. I mean, certainly. Well, uh, so long. So long. Altimeter. Important part of the equipment. It looks kind of fragile to me. If I break the doggone things, then he won't be able to go up today. I've got it. The heel of my slipper. No, it's there. Oh, yeah. So you're going to postpone your wedding to go flying, Mr. Frank Banning. Well, I'll show you. Hey, what's the big idea? Well, 
<laughs> Look here. I, I didn't think you'd see me. You're not aiming to be the kind of wife that ties her husband to her apron strings. You don't think that I'd give up flying for any dumb wife that took it into her head? Oh, no, Frank. You can fly. It's your business. It, it's just that today, well, don't you see? Can't you understand, Frank? It, it was going to be our wedding day, and now you want to go flying instead. Oh, so that's it. I'm to give up flying, but only till after I'm safely married. So that if anything does happen, you'll inherit my property. Frank, stop it. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, don't I? You're just like all the rest of them, a nice little gold digger. Well, you won't get your hands on my money. I've borrowed enough to go on with my flying. And I'm telling you now, the wedding's off. Where to, lady? First, I want to go to the First National Bank. Then I want to go to the Westmore Hotel and hurry. Yes, ma'am. Come in. Oh, so it's you. I thought you might come mooching around. Well, let me tell you that nothing you can say is going to make me change my mind about getting married. Don't worry. I didn't come here to talk, but to give you this. Take it. Oh, what's this? Five hundred dollars of my own savings to fix up your doggone equipment. And I wouldn't marry you, Frank Banning, if you were the last man on earth. So there. Here, Nola. No need to go pulling all the petals off my geraniums just because you've gone and had a spat with your young man. Oh, he's not my young man. I never want to see him again. Good afternoon. I know this is pretty late in the day for me to come in for my carnation. I'm sorry, Mr. Banning, but Uncle John will have to wait on you. I'm busy. No, just a moment. I don't want Uncle John, Nola. I want you. Oh, don't be childish. Come on, Nola. Get your hat. We're going places. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to the Justice of the Peace. If I have to carry you... That's what you think. I've been thinking things over, and I wouldn't marry an indolent, good-for-nothing waster whose only interest in life is doing a lot of loop-the-loops and playing leapfrog with cloud banks. For all the money in the world, listen, I wouldn't marry him. Nola, listen to me. I've been thinking things over myself. You were right. I've decided to sell the plane and settle down to some kind of work so I can support a family, in case I have a family, all by myself. But, but Frank, you mean... I mean... But I've found something in life that's a lot more important to me than flying. Oh. Nola, didn't you guess? Didn't you know? I'm... I'm crazy about you. Oh. You have been listening to a romantic drama featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine.